<laughs> April Fools! Oh fuck! I, I'm gonna keep track. That's one. <laughs> yeah. Happy Fourth of July. It's not, it's uh, not the April uh, Fools! <laughs> Something tells me, yes, it's going to be a long morning. Well, yes, <laughs> for a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people on the Twitter uh, <laughs> sent out their condolences to me already. <laughs> Are they suspect oh, today? today. <laughs> Have fun tomorrow was uh, what I saw a lot on Twitter. I was telling Sam as the uh, uh, yes. Uh, that uh, I wound up. I have three Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. you know, and Jim uh, Norton. Yes. Uh, Chip Chipperson. Yes. And Edgar Mellencamp. That's correct. And um, sometimes one will tweet the wrong thing. I've had that a few times. You get a little confused, do you? I do. Yeah. This morning it happened already. Uh, when I was in studio. Well, what happened this morning? I love the Twitter as video you can put up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I really like that new thing they have. You don't have to go to Instagram and tag it and right, do, all this do all shit. that shit. You can just go right from Twitter. Well, Twitter finally figured it out. Yeah. They're, they're like, why are we letting all these third-party apps, yeah. you know, get all the buzz when we could do it ourselves? So. And Instagram was a pain in the ass just because of the square, like the the box thing the they dumb have. Is square. Annoying. Enough already. Yeah, they really should stop come. making believe you're an artsy app. You're not. Most people aren't using it for that. They want a nice big screen for their videos and their pictures. Uh, anyway, good morning, everybody. Uh, we were just watching the Trevor Noah controversy play out on these news channels. Yeah. Fucking relax already. They're handling it well, I think, the media. They're doing a good job of representing what stand-up should be and the idea of doing comedy that's edgy. They're really bright people. Who, who, who is sticking up for Trevor Noah in, in the mainstream media? Can someone tell me? Because MS, MSNBC certainly isn't. They had some fucking, fucking windbag on about a half hour ago saying his tweets aren't even funny. They're not even comedy. You shouldn't be working out comedy on Twitter. That's exactly what it's for. It's a f and people who want to listen follow you. Right. People who don't don't. Right. That's like saying you shouldn't have a conversation in a room. Because somebody might record it and post it. Well, that's going to happen. Well, if you're having a conversation on Twitter, right, and people are following you, they enjoy what you're saying, right. If they retweet it, it's almost like if you hear a joke at home and the punchline is, and then I fucked her in the vagina with a hammer. Yeah. And you come into work and you tell that joke, right. People don't go back home and yell at the person in your house who told it to you. Of course. They yell at you for telling it. Of course. So if somebody fucking retweets something. Be mad at the person who retweeted something. Of course. Don't be mad at the guy that said it. He wasn't talking to you. Right. And if these tweets are so outrageous, which they're not, why no. are you now uh, presenting them to even more people? They're on the news. They couldn't be that bad. Uh, of course. Trevor Noah is a very funny guy. He is going to do very well for Comedy Central. Uh, these douchebags in the mainstream media, they, they searched his entire Twitter account and found only a handful that uh, were a bit on the edgy side, a bit controversial. And they're ignoring all the other tweets that probably were home runs for Trevor Noah as far as uh, mainstream comedy goes. And they're just focusing on that, basically trying to say, see, this guy is not a, a good guy for the job. And these old people who are on TV talking, these people who are in the, you know, I, I hate this, I'm in my 40s, but that's not the target demo they're going after with Trevor Noah. Right. At all. Right. Th that's not the people that they want for The Daily Show. So right. you can bitch all you want, but Comedy Central really doesn't care if you watch him. Right. Because you're not the guys uh, that he's going that they're going after yeah and they're standing by him which is smart so far so good and uh, well you know i'm not gonna dump him, I don't think. comedy central should be uh, jumping up and down in those uh in those uh rooms over there because uh this is great this is great publicity for your new guy i think so because the fact is trevor noah sells out around the world like jimmy was telling me uh, before the show he's not as famous in uh in the states yet he's getting there obviously and now oh, everyone's there now. <laughs> yeah, th well, that's my point. That's why Comedy Central should be jumping up and down yep. in their offices because, uh, yeah, now everyone is talking about Trevor Noah, and we it, a, a lot more people know his name yeah. now.
So, you know, congratulations on Comedy Central. But this is where you got to hang in there and stay tough and just, uh, you know, stand behind your guy. These tweets are so mild, too. Like, oh, I almost hit a Jewish guy with my German car. Right. Like, that's what they consider... Ugh. Right, and and turns out his wow. his mom is uh, Jewish. She converted. Right. I didn't remember that. So I, I remembered when the the caller brought it up yesterday. Okay. Then I absolutely do remember that he told us that she decided to convert, and so I, I think that's important. He must be so scared right now. Like you know, you get this amazing life changing gig, right? And then within twenty four hours, you're flipped upside down. And right, I, I think it's good that they're going to stick with him, though. I mean, I really hope they do. It's I think it's the right move. But when's the last time the press defended any comic for saying anything? Like, when's the last time? Can anybody remember the last time the fucking press? Oh God, no! Took the angle of, well, hey, this guy is just kidding. Yeah, no, never. Of course not. Because that doesn't that that doesn't keep the story going. They're coming after you guys, man. You guys are the hot fucking thing to go after. Yeah. Comics in general. Um, let's see. Uh, later in the afternoon, Noah chimed in with his official comment to reduce my views. To a handful of jokes that didn't land is not a true re reflection of my character, nor my evolution as a comedian. Good for Trevor Noah. Yeah, because some of these tweets, they, they don't even want to tell you, are from three years ago. We read the tweets yesterday on our show. They were from 2012, and then they went all the way back to uh, 2009. So they're, they're reading tweets from six fucking years ago. Mm -hmm. What were you doing six fucking years ago that didn't hit? That, yeah. that it's kind of maybe, maybe embarrassing. I thought the tweets were good, even, were though, fine, yeah. even though they were three years old, six years old. Some were they funny, were some weren't, but they were, none of them were offensive. None of them were vicious. Like, no. You know, no. What did he express an, an opinion about Israel and Palestine that people didn't like? Too fucking bad. Right. That, that's what happens in a, in a, a free-thinking culture. People express opinions that you think stink. Right. But these people going on the news and trying to tell you what, what, uh, what comedy's all about when they obviously have not the first clue what it's about is unbelievable to me. That's why They're I like, just... They're like, Twitter's not a place to work out your comedy. What, what is, Twitter's a shitty place. What else are you supposed to do with it? Yeah, There's no highbrow discussions going on on Twitter. Yeah, I don't know what they expect you to do on Twitter. Right. If you could tweet cock photos, that's all I'd be doing. <laughs> if they yank my account, no pun intended. The reason the media is going after Trevor Noah is because they view him as competition. To a certain extent, I guess. But, you know. What well, are maybe. They maybe. I don't know. Jon Stewart was, was an animal for Comedy Central, and he didn't really, he didn't really hurt the rest of these, uh, these outlets, right? And you know how we talk about, like, our complaint about how young people suck? Or, but these are not young people who are doing these stories. These are all people in their 50s. Right. These press people are in their 50s, so it's not just people who are 20 who are hypersensitive. It's these, right. these adults. The one thing that will drive me nuts uh, always is when someone goes on TV and goes, that's not comedy. <laughs> like, they know. How, how do you know? There's, there are a lot of people that find Trevor Noah and the tweets that you're actually reading to be funny. Don't tell me what comedy is. I think that's up. That's up to the uh, the end uh, of. Well, I guess that person thinks it's not comedy. Yeah. But he he wants everyone to know that it's not comedy. Like he's some kind of expert. Yeah, we all know what comedy is. You could say it's not. That's not drama. How come no one says that's not drama? Like you could say that movie sucked, but you don't say that's not drama. Right. Like you know what it is. That's not horror. Right. Yeah, it was. It just wasn't a good horror movie. Yeah, it just didn't hit or whatever. So it's such dicks. But to pick out, like, I think they're focusing on between six and eight tweets. The guy has tweeted thousands of times, and they had to go back to most of them were from uh, 2012. That's three years ago. That's the, the uh, guy has matured in three years as a comic. But I, I don't think anything's changed. Like you know, it's like whatever what gets you in trouble changes in the method. But it's the same shit, man. People have been coming after comedians since Lenny Bruce. Right. It's just what people do. They find people say like comedians who talk about controversial things. Right. Oh, you guys say what we're just thinking. <laughs> right. When they agree with it. Right. But whatever, it's the same discussion every time. And uh, after this week, yeah. it'll be someone else. Of course. And, and uh, you know, they're just lazy, too, because the Trevor uh, Noah story, which we were lucky to get on our show because he was promoting a documentary, is fascinating. Yeah. He started comedy in South America. They didn't really know what comedy was, basically. They didn't have comedy clubs in or South any of that shit. So, what did I say? South, South America? America? Sorry yeah. about that. South Africa. And then he comes from a family where the his mom and dad couldn't walk down the street together because of racism. Yeah, it was illegal. It was illegal. So, you know, they, they're a family unit, and they're like, oh, we got to go over there. Oh, that's right. We can't walk together. That's what they should focus on. His story's amazing.
Yeah, but these fucking, these coddled scumbags take this guy and they're just, well, that was inappropriate that he, oh, go fuck yourself. Yeah, why don't you go uh, talk about uh, where he comes from, because that would be very uh, uh, um, interesting to your viewers. That's so silly. The father literally had to go, well, you walk over there, I, I have to walk down the street on the other side of the street. Right, and I can also see the value in that, <laughs> as many of us can. But. And then, of course, the father then is sneaking in a back door or something just so he could be with, uh, you know, Trevor's mom for a little while. Really fucking amazing story. Yeah, I mean, I wonder when people are going to get bored about it uh, over the whole, the idea of it. And this is not even most people. Like, most people I'm, and we know or, or be listeners, or, no one gives a fuck or is, or is bothered. Right. But it's like the press is just talking to itself. Like, I, we respond to it and go like, well, fuck them. But it really is. The press is not speaking for the people. Right. They're not representing what we or most people want. Right. They're just talking to each other. I was outraged. Me too. Talking head. Right. You're a news correspondent. Okay. I'll come on in. And they, they, we all know what they're going to say. We all know the angle they're going to take. Like, people know what angle I'm going to take. Right. I wrote something. It may be up today. Supposedly, up to, You all know what angle I'm going to take, so I'm, I'm not throwing any fucking curveballs either. Uh, well, uh, you got an article He should be up? fired. I think he should be fired. <laughs> I don't appreciate that kind of tweeting. I've said it for years. Wait, you that got, sounded like Ted Sheckler. You got an article on this. Well, I don't, yeah, they, I, they, uh, I wasn't going to. I never... I, uh, you I, absolutely I, should have on this one. No, but I mean, I never write them and ask, can I submit uh, something? You absolutely should. If they contact me and ask, I do. So they ask me something, um, and but once it's up, I'll tweet it. If, if, if it goes up, I never know if it's going up until it, it's up. So all right, we'll let you know if uh, if uh, if it does. I, I'm I, outraged. And he should be fired. And I said that repeatedly. Where where are the rest of the people that are, are are speaking about these issues like logically? They just don't speak about this shit logically on the mainstream fucking news. It's us. It's Anthony. Who else? Who else is in our world? Where Sam that, Roberts, but he technically uh, usually Sam will agree with them because Sam doesn't like that type of humor. Yeah, it's not for me. I it's don't not for you. It's not for you. Sam thinks you know, and I understand Sam has has that kind of that MSNBC oh, vibe. Right. I respect yeah. Sam. We're, we're, we're the you. leaders of the millennials, you know. So I, I, I'm proud of that. Who are me and Jimmy? Yeah. You not so much. Yeah, the leaders of the millennials. Yes, the we demo. are. Yeah, I'm out of the Yes, demo. you are. You yes, are. Sure. Oh, you're too young. They're like an older gentleman to guide them. They oh, absolutely yeah. do. If there's, if there's one thing, uh, the youths enjoy its experience. They That's like, right. They like uh, they like their leaders to have just a little gray in their beards. Right, a little salt and pepper. Just a little leaders. bit, not too much. The millennials appreciate that. Yes, they do. And Jimmy and I have that. A little salt and pepper. S&P, as we say. I got you. S&P for the youngsters. <laughs> they love it. They certainly do. <laughs> but who is speaking about this shit in a, in a real way? Because I, I watch the news and I'm like, holy fuck, you guys are all the same fucking people you you take six stupid tweets and you and and you you all have the same exact narrative about it yeah i'm sure greg gutfeld probably takes a different angle yeah um who else well there are also who else i can't think of really one of the the national director of the anti-defamation league was writing in time magazine and nobody's really talking about it that he's not he doesn't really have a problem with noah right he wrote, uh, the tweets that have been singled out, tasteless and offensive remarks about Jews, women, fat people, and others, seem mostly isolated and dated. Oh, very good. Certainly attacking Jews and minorities has not come to define this young stand-up comedian's career. And like many of other comedians, Mr. Noah seems more like an equal opportunity offender than a cheap trick jokester or a raging bigot. But I don't even think he's uh, trying to just, you know, uh, offend everyone. I don't even think that's his... Yeah, it's making fun of shit. His shit, yeah. If something pops up in his mind, he's going, oh, I'm a comedian, I'm going to fucking twist this a little bit. Who is this guy? Because he should get a little credit today. Abe Foxman. Oh. He's the national director of the Anti-Defamation League. All yeah, right. why would they listen to him? All right, good for <laughs> Abe Foxman. Because that's, that's pretty right on. He says, let's not uh, prejudge him based on a few random isolated tweets in the past. Let's judge him based on his performance going forward into the future. Abe's a fox, man. <laughs> uh, get it? Uh, yeah, we Family? Know. You shouldn't be allowed if we're going to have to deal with Edgar. We don't have to deal with Edgar. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know where Edgar is. What no. are you talking about? Uh, the reason Trevor Noah is getting so much heat is because he's not American. Oh. Really? He'd think? get the same heat if he was American. He would. He would. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it, it, it's definitely a very interesting uh, choice by 
Comedy Central, but I, I'm sure uh, they know what the fuck they're doing. They're not going to just let the whole John Stewart empire just collapse. Yeah, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't put it on some guy who wasn't going to be able to. He's funny too, man. He's a funny stand-up. I've seen his stand-up. He worked at the cellar a lot, and I would watch him. And uh, he's a good act, right? And he fucking he he weighs in on stuff. And at the table, we would be just going back and forth about shit. I remember the first time I really met him and spoke to him. We were talking about something, and all of a sudden I hear, oh no 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 no. And it's like he's fucking chiming in. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> but he was smart, and you know, and he kind of fit right in. Just right. you know, he immediately weighed in with something. He wasn't meek, right? But uh, you know, what, what kind of guy do you want at the, at the Daily Show? A guy that doesn't address this. If you address this stuff at all, you're gonna fucking step on toes. Sorry, and, and but he's a cheap, cheap jokester. And who can't appreciate a, a good uh, chubster joke? A chubster tweet. Yeah, who cares? They're Why focusing on a fat tweet he did. Oh, Can no. you find that one? Don't make fun of fat people. Oh no. Oh no! The fat people get their love. Relax. How come? I hate to say, it, but how come like Richard Pryor is the only one people will acknowledge can make fun of race? Like, why can't this guy make? Pryor did Jewish Ooh. jokes. He Pryor did one in the in the fucking wino and the junkie talking about Ooh. don't go down fucking with those Jews without any money about why, right. why 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 is that okay? Insurance was born. Whoa online. whoa! They have smart online. They didn't pay for that shit, yes, Sam Roberts. Not, you just gave him a free ad. That's free advertising, what the fuck? Sam. Why'd you turn on a computer? I That's didn't turn point. it on. Oh. It really was a, a, a group effort. You should make sure <laughs> that button is not on before you push play over there, son. Here's your tweet. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I want to ask. Uh, I want to answer Jimmy's question. Oh. You think if Richard Pryor was around today, he would be able to do that, or was that something uh, that was okay because it was so many years ago? No, his show only lasted four episodes. He got a lot of shit, but the problem is, so many people liked him, he didn't care. Right. But you know what I mean? He got a lot of shit. Probably they almost arrested him. Right. When he was on stage for what he said, but, there was obscenity shit was, was happening. But do you think all his stuff would fly these days? Or not um, all, I shouldn't say, but I mean, uh, you know, a majority of it. Yeah, he would still do it. Like, Mike Epps still does what he does. Mike Epps has that, um, you know, that, that guy who kind of says what he wants to say. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think Pryor would change anything. All right, where's the tweet there, uh, Sam? Uh, oh, yeah, The weekend. People are going to get drunk and think that I'm sexy. And that would be uh, fat chicks everywhere. <laughs> That's funny. There's Trevor Noah. They're focusing on that. That tweet, by the way, that they're focusing on is, uh, let me do the math real fast, three and a half uh, years old. Three and a half years old. And they're focusing on that. Did you see the so now, now you've got to like, explain your entire history. Did you see last night the, or this morning, I don't know, Pat Oswalt tweeted a joke. And then he uh, spent f literally 50 tweets explaining and apologizing for the joke. It's very funny. <laughs> I'm writing it down rules. word by word. And <laughs> he rules. Yeah, Patton's very funny. And his brother rules. His brother's a great follow. <laughs> the his jokes, brother's nuts. The joke started with parentheses, one out of 53. Oh and then my he actually God. tweeted 53 times to properly no explain the joke. <laughs> the most, you should read the entire thing because the punchline at the end is what makes it all perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, should we read it on the air? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, you I'm, scared me for I'm a second. I'm just saying, like, when you have the time, yeah, I will. It's, it's worth reading all the tweets. What was the first tweet that started this well, whole thing? The joke. The first tweet is the yeah. joke, which okay. is, question, Yeah. why did the man throw butter out of the window? Answer, he wanted to see butterfly. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's clean. It's clever. It's fucking good humor. Should be hosting the Daily Show. That's funny. Right? And then the next fifty-two tweets are an explanation as to what he meant by the words he used. And can, and can you read just a few of them? And then we don't have to do the whole thing. Obviously, do, do number two. Number two is yeah. man. In my previous tweet, should not be construed as privileged, misogynist, or anti-trans. Right. Three is, nor should there be any assumption of said man's race or religion. It could be an African-American man, Asian, or anyone. Beautiful. And he goes on and on. Give goes, me two more, and then, we, then the people will have to read the rest. Uh, for you, uh, uh, you can uh, just go in order. It don't matter. Or. Number 16, out the window was okay. not meant as any sort of insult to the homeless population in that <laughs> the phrase out the window could, uh, next tweet could easily be construed as placing the butter thrower in a house, right. which next tweet the butter thrower owns. <laughs> right. The triggering potential for out the window is not to be underestimated, nor should the act of throwing away food, which can be read as violent corporate centric status maneuver. God, he's great. And then he, I'll just read the last tweet. 
Yeah. Uh, the last tweet, so we're going scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There's 53 of these to explain the joke. Right. Gotcha. And uh, here's the last one. I think one. you have to read the tweet before the last tweet. Okay. Right. Uh, so 52 out of 53 is, welcome to comedy in 2015, Trevor Noah. Right. And 53 out of 53 is, also, the come part of welcome shouldn't be construed in a, quote, faggy way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's offensive. Hold on a second. He said something offensive. <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> Jim, thanks. We were having a laugh. Uh, I just texted Pat, and I, I, I'm hoping he's up. He, he listens to us a lot of times, so hopefully we get him on the show, because let him weigh in on this Trevor Noah thing and how ridiculous it is and how the mainstream media doesn't realize how ridiculous this thing is. Uh, let's see. Comedians are now vetted just like politicians. That's uh, a good point. Go yeah. ahead, Ron, in Ohio. Yeah, I mean, it's just getting fucking ridiculous how when a politician takes office, right, he gets vetted, they go back over everything the poor son of a bitch has said in his life, and all of a sudden his career is ruined. We're talking about fucking comedians here, right? Not fucking somebody who's going to be making laws or making decisions. Comedians, okay? They're out there to make funny fucking jokes, and that's it. I respect I respect uh, comedians before I respect politicians. Period. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like almost but across the, the board. Making, yeah, I mean the, the point I'm making though is is our, our media and people I don't know these simple minded assholes in in our society are now vetting comedians and talk show hosts like like they're representing the the public at large. They're out there to make us fucking laugh, and that's it. Yeah. Well, well, part of this, uh, they're jumping on Trevor Noah and Comedy Central is because everyone knows they didn't really like Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart made fun of all those guys for being just ridiculous. But they saw him in a way as one of them. The press did like him because they, they saw Jon as one of their guys. Um, but again, he didn't have Twitter when he was coming up, so he didn't have the opportunity to say shit that... I'm not even going to say dumb shit because nothing Trevor said was dumb. Right. It was just... He, he didn't have that chance because he came up in a different right. time, so there wasn't that immediate accountability for every single thing you say publicly. Sure. But I mean, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, they're not fans of Jon Stewart whatsoever. I don't know about that. I would, I would think you would. I would think that they would. Did, uh, I think they are. You think? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't give you a definitive on it. Maybe they're annoyed at his popularity, but uh, he Maybe. always did very well, and people always played his clips and complimented him. Well, with that said, they would like uh, nothing more than you know Trevor Noah to be a big bust. I think they don't like the fact that people actually listen to him. Yeah. So Maybe that bothers them. The fact that he comes on and people actually take what he says. As seriously as what they say. Yeah. And he gets Obama interviews, and he gets fucking yeah. Joe Biden interviews, just like he, they do. He turned that shit around, man. People yeah. forget, forget when Jon Stewart first started. Uh, most people looked at it as a goof in general, even though he's a very clever, yeah. smart you know, comic. And, and he, uh, he earned respectability from uh, the people that were watching that show. Yeah, he interviews serious politicians, and he has that real guests. what was going on at first, no. right? No, he no. made that yeah, show they're, his they're own. not even... They're not even giving them the opportunity to earn that respect. They're just flat out saying the guy's obviously a racist and we shouldn't put him on TV. And it's just, it, it, there's no reason for it. Don't forget, though, the generation that's now going after him, which is interesting to watch, are, they're, like I said, they're all people in their 50s. These are people whose guy, and they like Jon Stewart, he's leaving. So now this young guy is coming in, and maybe they're resisting that. Maybe maybe because they do like Jon Stewart. Right. There's something about this that just, oh, let's go get this young this young guy with his, this new type of humor that we don't... Right. It's a lot of that shit, too. I, I, I hope Trevor uh, Noah doesn't back down from this stuff, because I love his honesty. There's another tweet here. I didn't really see this one, but it's uh, popping up on a lot of blogs. Maybe it made the news. He uh, tweeted, uh, once again, three years ago, I actually prefer the women's league to the men's said by nobody ever about any sport except oh. maybe beach volleyball. <laughs> oh no. You wait a minute. You mean he likes to watch girls play volleyball, but he doesn't like women's basketball more? Why, why should he host the Daily Show? <laughs> oh, my God. He shouldn't be allowed to do comedy ever. He should be fired. Why would he say that? To, to make a gender difference between which sport people like, right. that's inappropriate. Am I right or wrong? Funny You're tweet. Right. Um, a true tweet. Most people don't give a fuck about women's uh, sports. I'm no. sorry. They just don't. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you taking my call. <laughs> All right, you that's guys, uncalled for. Yeah, you guys doing a hell of a job. Have a great day. If you're uh, if you're in your living room on a Saturday or Sunday, and you're flipping around and you see 
uh, the LPGA or the PGA, every single fucking time you're going to stop on the PGA if you're a sports fan. Of course. Same with the uh, WNBA over the NBA. I mean, you know. So, I mean, that that's a very good tweet by Trevor Noah. And, and funny in the end. Good morning, Jim Florentine. How are you? Well, we're just uh, going off on this Trevor Noah thing. That's right. We think he should be fired. And that type of language is not appropriate for a comedian. Twitter is not a place for your comedy routine. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Comedy Central backed him up, right? Yep. So far, so good. Yeah. So far, so good. Do you think that it helps that he's half black? I don't think it matters in this case for he, some you reason. You don't think so? No, that's not matter. Just a, no. His mom's Jewish. No, I know, but it just if he was just a regular, help too, right? plain old white dude, would they go after him harder? I don't know. I don't know if they could go after him harder. I mean, they're going after him pretty hard. I mean, it's it's. I think because he's the new host of the Daily Show, and they smell that they smell that blood in the water. Mm. Get him. Mm. And that's just it. it it's like he, why, why are we in a society where everyone just wants to get everybody? It's uh, what fucking babies. Yeah. That's the world we live in now. Every fucking day on the news, in the papers, on the internet, are people trying to, trying to just get others. Yeah. Why? What is, it, what, what is going on in everyone's head that, that, that this is the mentality now? Oh, it's just silly, dude. It's, 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 it's like it, you can't wrap your head around It's not going to change. Like, we all look for that one thing that we're going to say that will fix it, but it's just not going to change. And I feel like we're in the minority, too, man. I really do. Not as far people. as fighting this shit. I just feel like we're in the minority. Yeah. Well, maybe this world is passing us by or something because I don't get it. No, but again, the people going after him right now are in our age group. They're not kids. It's not like there's a bunch of 20 year olds attacking him. Right. It's also the people on MSNBC there who are fucking. But ah, the, it's just. That's not a place to try your comment. They're fucking older. But the kids in general are showing a lot of fucking outrage over, no, they, yeah, uh, over so much shit. Yeah, they're always douchey. Anyway. Peck it's great publicity for Comedy Central. Yeah, we said that. Sure, when, sure. Is that, when does he take over? Do you know the exact date? Or I don't. Uh, I really don't know the exact date. It's, it's sooner than later, but it's not like maybe a month or two, I would guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's great for Comedy Central because he, he's not as well known in, in the States. And now a lot more people know the name Trevor Noah. Absolutely. 100%. Oh, my God. And, and, and you know, they would have got the word out with a nice press release to begin with. But now with everybody talking about it, just as we in the last half hour as we're as we're doing radio, I've seen another three fucking pieces on it yeah. on our news channels that we have up in the background here. They're all just babbling about it. And plus, he only did uh, three appearances on The Daily Show yes. since December, so he's not on there all the time, where all right. The Daily Show people know him. No. They this tried him out. Time. They basically tried him out three times and said, yep, you're yeah. the guy. Wow. And you know they got a whole stable of guys they probably were thinking about. Do you know how many Fredos there are right now? Fucking who got stepped over and they're, you know, hey, it's, it's the way Comedy Central wanted it. Right. It ain't the way I wanted it. <laughs> you know how many upset people there probably are? Although who, I don't know, John Oliver's gone. A lot of the correspondents that were really big left, I mean. John Oliver's the man. He's my favorite He right was now. a correspondent there for a while, I guess. Uh, right? Yes, yes, yeah. he was. Those guys really do well, man. Uh, Oliver was is just great. The Oliver show was amazing. I've never watched it, but he's got he's a great delivery. He's a funny dude. Really funny. I wish the show was longer, and I wish it was. It's it's only a half hour once a week. It Fuck. might be better half hour. It might be just good. Let me. I got a great half hour here. Let's just do it. And uh, I could squeeze an hour a week, or maybe squeeze two half hours a week. I don't know. Maybe or who knows? I kind of just want a little more. Yeah, you don't want to totally burn it out, right? Uh, Shane in Texas. Let's go to Shane. Shane. Hey. Hey, hey, good morning, though. Good morning, buddy. Hey, bud. Uh, I was wanting to know if you guys heard uh, Bonnie and Rich last night. They had their little seven-year-old daughter, Raina, on, and she fucking killed the first five or ten minutes of the show. They had a caller call in uh, asking Rich if uh, he could cuss his little daughter out, and it goes from there. But she had the line of the week, man, for sure. Don't give, don't give, don't give the line away. We're going to no get sir. that for the people, right? You should have it. That was great, man. I, I, have a good morning. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, I heard, once again, Rich and Bonnie were great. Every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock on this channel, they're killing it. I'm telling you, they, they have a really good fucking radio show. And last night they had their, I think she's 7 or 8, 8-year-old daughter on just cursing and just... She was cursing. She was yeah. holding her own. She held her own for like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. They're in trouble, those two, with that daughter. She is going to be a problem. I know. Probably in a good way, though. Uh, Noah is getting this flack because he is replacing Stewart and the media hates him. Yeah, that's sort of what I... Let me go to JP. They say the media hates Jon Stewart? I, th- I, uh, no. maybe, I think they hate... Absolutely not. I think they hate his success. 
and that he was able to get respectability. JP, what do you got on this? Jimmy doesn't yeah, I mean, agree with you necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, you basically stole my thunder a couple of minutes ago when you said that, because it's the truth, man. I mean... Well, just add to it. I mean, we already made the point, but how could you add to it? Uh, well, I mean, I don't really think I can. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Good. <laughs> nice. Nice. Real nice. <laughs> I mean, we're honest to God, because, I mean, Stewart made his uh, fortune off of showing some idiot on Fox uh, saying something dumb. Then they would cut back to him, and he'd have a cute little smile on his face, and the studio audience would go crazy. Yeah, I don't think Fox would. Maybe Fox doesn't like Fox him, but that's not of. CNN. Or... Fox, oh. Fox definitely doesn't like him. Okay, but... but the other networks do. He's still very popular among them, because they, they see him as a very, very smart social commentator. And he is a smart social commentator, uh, but a lot of it is because he kind of agrees with what they, what they yeah. stand for ideologically. And CNN and MSNBC, they're not doing uh, great in the ratings whatsoever. I wonder if they're even th maybe thinking about trying to figure out something for Jon Stewart. I know Jon Stewart wants a, an easier schedule and stuff, but maybe they could go, hey, man, come on over here and do a few hours a week. You know? He'll probably end up on Netflix doing something, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what he's going to do. I, he's too young to retire. He he just got sick of the grind. He's going to regroup and, and pop with something, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm punching out, boys. Love you. All right. All right, JP. Thank you. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. In other news. Uh, Harvey fucking Weinstein's chick is phenomenal. Yeah, she's on the front page of the wow. paper today. He didn't grab yeah. her tits. He should have. I know. I'm a mad at him now. What a delight. Let me see. How do you not? Lovely. What? She's really pretty, man. Yeah, she's gorgeous. She's quite a neck on her, though. I'll say that. She's, she uh, reminds me of a few young ladies I've uh, encountered. Just the neck reminds you of? Just the neck, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. There might be an extra part in the neck? No, I don't think oh, there okay, is. I'm okay. only saying it just reminds me. Oh, okay. Uh, she's going to fight Harvey, though. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, there's no advantage for her to go... Uh, she's going to fight. But I wonder if she came, came on to him a little, knowing that, hey, I'm going to walk out of here... And claim that he grabbed me, you know what I mean? Like maybe she was just grabbing, and then he just she's like, "No, feel my tits," you know. And he, wow, they're real, you know what I mean? Little, just, uh, just yeah, a little setup. Up on my ass, just feel it. There's an it's article okay. you're allowed to, right. you know, and then walks out. Right. There's an article on page uh, in in the post or is the daily yeah post about uh, beauty hit rich Italian with sex suit. So she fucking sued uh, some rich Italian guy, I guess. Um, I don't know why I'm just paraphrasing what I just she read. did. So she already did this before. Uh, apparently, yeah, or, yeah. or the, the guy did something. Look, I, you know, who knows? I, hot women do have to put up with a lot of shit, but... Right. Uh, let's see. Is it, uh, they're calling her an opportunist. Harvey's camp is calling her an opportunist with a sketchy past. The head-turning brunette was hardly surprised by the attack on her credibility. Uh, uh, all right. We're going to see how this plays out. Hope he didn't say anything... In e email or text, just being a guy that would embarrass him. That you know, maybe she's hoping for that. Maybe he said something in a text, right? Like, hey, sexy, come on, you know, or whatever. Just that he wouldn't want his wife to read. Maybe she's banking on that. What happens to a guy like that if it's true? He owns his own company. Does he step down? No, he, no, he, he of course can't. not. He can't because there's no again, there's no definitive proof unless she tape recorded stuff and it really happened. Then th there might be an issue, but mm, I don't yeah. know. She might have recorded the whole thing. You know, just audio. Who knows? You think there was some flirting going on? Yeah, there could have been some flirting going on. Yeah, I just yeah. don't see him... Some innocent flirting? He's too smart of a guy to do something like that. Right. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I'm too smart of a guy to do that, and I'm a fucking idiot. Especially in an office during a day. Like, if it's in a party at a club or something like that, he's drunk, maybe he's, uh, he's taking mm -hmm. a picture, whatever, he might squeeze her ass. Possibly. Get a squeeze I, in? Yeah. Just get one quick squeeze in? <laughs> You always, when you take pictures with people after the show, if it's a hot chick, you always get an extra squeeze in. I'm sure Jim does that, too. <laughs> Try to yeah. get a little squeeze in? Yeah. yeah, a little cheek brush. <laughs> yeah, something, yeah. Right. I always go, who grabbed my ass? Like, just as a joke. Right. And then maybe the girl will do it. Oh, very nice. Did yeah. you guys do that? Yeah. Smart. If I pull that off, they would all just go, no one. <laughs> <laughs> they could never pull that off. Florentine would do that. He would always get these weird lines. You know, excuse me, miss, are you good at math? No, why do you ask? <laughs> you know, I never worked for me. So yeah. Get away from me, weirdo. No, my line was always like, when I was single, if it was a girl that was hot after the show and she came by, if I talked, I'd go, I hope you... Hope your uh, boyfriend didn't get mad at those jokes I was saying up there. It's like, he's not my boyfriend. 
I'm like, oh, your husband? Because he's just my friend. I'm like, oh, okay. So then I know. All right, beautiful. Yeah, now you, yeah. Know you got a shot. Yeah, or if I saw a hot chick in the front when I was single together, I'd work it in, into my show. I'm like, so how long are you guys dating? We're just friends. Oh, yeah, that was like, oh, right, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Always. as I prowl the stage like a panther, I've done that many times. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm a fucking. I didn't even care about my set. I just want to know <laughs> of who was the single one in the crowd. What's your status? Yeah, uh, the old pumpkin tits is back to normal as soon as we're I get on off. a first date. I'm like, all right, good. I can. That's beautiful. Yeah. For real, that's beautiful. So I would always find out, uh, but I could never pull off the slick lines. I just couldn't do it. No, you know. So, Mrs. You was your boyfriend mad? It would always be no. He loves you. That's the response yeah. I get. He thinks you're great. I'm only here because of him. All right, get it. God. <laughs> I <get> very depressed. <laughs> it turns out everyone uh, knew that co-pilot was fucking uh, depressed. He basically told everybody. He did admit it. He told the airline. Yep. Back in uh, 2009. Yep. Hey, man, I'm uh, dealing with some depression. Well, he said, I'm, I'm depressed. And they said, are you really depressed? And he said, Apophis! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. That's three. It's fun. It's fun for everyone. Yep. I like how they came out in two days and said, this guy crashed a plane right in a mountain. Right. Here, we, it'd be three years of investigations, and they sure. go, like, mechanical failure. Sure. They just came right out, go, the, guy, the pilot crashed right. a plane on purpose. Yeah. And he told the airline this but was But meanwhile, it. it's going to cost them more, way more now that they way just came more. out and said that, and, said, and now we're finding right. out the guy was depressed and all this stuff. They would cover that up here. Well, the emails just, they probably couldn't cover. They can't cover up emails, and that's what's coming out. They have to send these emails. So I think that they realize, oh, there's proof in the emails, and that's why they just came out and admitted it, because their lawyers have probably been pouring over every right. fucking email sent. And now that they realize, because you can't, even fucking uh, Petraeus couldn't make an email disappear when he was running the CIA. Right. right. They, well, Hillary seems to have, but you know, no, most of us can't do that. Yeah, all hers went away. Yeah. Oh, my God. But he reportedly knew, uh, the, the airline reportedly knew of Copilot's past deep depress, uh, depressive episode in 2009. Authorities deny reports that cell phone video from inside the plane during final seconds was found. Oh, yeah, that came out late yesterday. So that's that's not true. Okay. Me, uh, Jimmy and I uh, were talking about this before the show. Imagine it, it, he, imagine this guy was thinking about crashing a plane before this one, and just for whatever reason, it, it didn't work out. Maybe he couldn't get the pilot out of the fucking cockpit on that flight. I'm sure he did. Or well, he's sitting there going, nah, not today. Nope, not today. While that, he was alone, yeah. All right, there's probably people out there that are extremely lucky that they were probably on a flight that he was possibly thinking about doing this and, and chose for whatever reason not to. Absolutely. Until he finally did it, obviously. And then Jimmy said to me uh, before the show, imagine all the people just in America that have no idea that their pilot that day was, uh, de you know, uh, fucking debating this in his head. How many of us have been on a flight? Where again, it's a different because there's a cope, there's a flight attendant in him. But how many of us have been on a flight where a, co a, f a pilot may have had that moment of, I'm going to kill him and then kill all? Of like, it, right. who knows? Right. I'm sure that there's more depressed pilots than just this fucking one yeah, asshole. You got to think there's there were absolutely a few of those yeah. over the years. I mean, look, yeah, I mean, if that pilot. Said, no, I don't have to go to the bathroom. I'm good. It never came out of the cockpit. It was only like an hour and 10 minute flight. Right. He would have never been able to pull it off. No, and then he would have just waited. Exactly. Yeah. How, how, how many flights did he take where it wasn't, you know, he couldn't get it done because the, you know, the, co uh, the, the actual pilot didn't have leave. to piss? Yeah, exactly. Excuse me. Well, yeah. I know he got to the point where his girlfriend was going to, I think, allegedly his girlfriend's pregnant. They're thinking, she was saying she was having a baby. He bought her a brand new car to try to win her back. She said no, and she was going to move out. Right. That all happened like the last 10 days. Right. Yeah. So I think it probably just came to a head. It finally came all to came a head. to a head. He's like, all right, I'm losing her. She's moving out. She might be pregnant, and, right. you know, I got nothing to live so, for. Instead of just taking his medicine and stop being a fucking mopey asshole around the house, why don't you realize that you're the problem? Why don't you realize that your fucking dumb moods and you're like you're you're, you're like your constant sulking is what's fucking annoying her? And supposedly he had a, a five month affair with another ooh, flight attendant ooh, tell us in the middle of it. So that's what, and then she found out about it. Oh, so. well, he was finished. Oh, wow. Well, that cock didn't seem to be depressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it didn't. <laughs> So, and then people are assuming that we think all mentally ill people are capable of, capable of doing what this guy did. Of course not. Well, how about this? Those of you who think that, stop making it about yourselves. Of course not. If you're not a person that would do this, then you're not the person we're talking about. I read a few of those tweets. I'm like, when did we say that? 
That was the, a know, lot of people suffer from depression and they never do anything outrageous and crazy like this. A guy. lot of people of suffer from not. mental illness. There's at least two in this room. It's okay. Which two? Well, I'll take responsibility. <laughs> 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 that was the whole theory behind um, Rudy Sarzo used to play with Ozzy. That was the whole theory with the Randy Rhodes plane crash. Oh, God. The pilot, the guy that went up on the plane, yeah. the, you know, the tour bus was sitting on the runway. Right. Uh, Ozzy, Sharon was sleeping in there, the rest of the band. Right. And the pilot was all coked up. Right. And woke up Randy, Randy Rhodes, and I think the hairdresser said, hey, I'm going up in a plane, a private plane, I have my license. And his ex-wife, they were getting divorced. Right. It was a bitter going through a bitter divorce. The ex-wife was there on the bus because she lived in town or something like that. So he got those up, and he was all coked out. He got them on a plane, and she was standing on the bus, and the bus was on the runway. Right. And Rudy swears that because he, he aimed the plane at his ex-wife in the bus to kill everybody. But why would he fucking drag Randy Rhodes into that whole mess? He just fucking asshole. You want to come up and idiot. take? He wanted everybody on the on the plane. He woke up Ozzy, Sharon, like no, we're sleeping. He tried to get Ozzy too, huh? Oh, you tried to get everybody up on the yeah, get up on the plane. I'm gonna go. To, I'm a pilot. Let's. He so, probably wanted to kill all of them. So and so you think Rudy said Rudy, uh, Rudy was on the bus too and his ex-wife was there and they were going through a bitter divorce and he was just buzzing around by the plane like, you know, playing around and then the last one he just smashed right into the bus. Why was his ex-wife there with him? I don't know because I think they, he, she lived in that town like in outside of Orlando wherever it was. So she was there. I guess, you know, he was on the road so maybe she came to say hello to him or something. I don't know. But they were going through a bitter divorce and Rudy swears that that's what happened. The guy was suicidal and oh, he was wow. taking out everybody. Wow. Just take out yourself, please. Yeah. Probably talking to a few of you right now. Just take take out yourself. Even that, there was a story that um, that guy used to be a tour bus. He was a, you know drove around a tour bus, and that about two months before that band Rainbow with Richie Blackmore. Yeah, sure. So that guy takes over. Richie had like a guy that always drove him, even from the Deep, Deep Purple days, for like ten years. And the guy wanted to go on a week vacation with his wife, so they hired this guy to take over. So Richie gets on the bus and looks at the bus driver and goes, "Call him up. I'm not getting on this bus. This guy looks evil. There's something about him." And that was the that was the bus driver that did it. Three weeks later, did Richie it? Richie Blackmore felt some vibe with this guy and said, "I am not getting on a bus. Go call our old guy up. I'm not. This guy's not driving us." And that was the guy that piloted. That was the, the guy three weeks later. That no, kidding. It's yeah, it's amazing how you. I, had, I taught, never heard that story yeah. before. You taught not to trust those instincts, that yeah. gut feeling, but yeah. well, a lot of times it's right. Of course it is. Uh, a friend who was a pilot says he could have called the control center from outside of the cockpit. Uh, what would that have done, though? Yeah, well, because there's a guy on the phone. Yeah, let me find that, out. Maybe the guy did call the control center. I would assume if, if that was a possibility, he definitely... Could he get a signal up that... Uh, I don't know. Uh, is there a phone out there that he can call? I don't maybe, well, maybe the uh, plane has one that attaches. Uh, uh, maybe some kind of satellite phone, right? Yeah. Rich in Chicago. Ooh, lucky you. Hey, hey buddy. Yeah, I'm young, too, Jim. And sexy. <laughs> Wow, that was bad. Okay, anyway. So <laughs> That's okay. I'm sorry I left you hanging on that. <laughs> we probably could have helped you out a little bit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, it's garbage. Fine. Um, so I have a good friend of mine who's a pilot. He was saying that if this doesn't happen now, it will happen in the future. That there are like auto ride overs that the uh, control center can take through the FDA. So if that ever happened again, the pilot calls the control center and then they basically have the plane go into autopilot. I don't. <clears throat> oh, yeah, but you know what, dude? Maybe, but it would, wouldn't the ability to control the plane from the ground? I think is a bigger risk no than the idea of a suicidal pilot because you could have a guy on the ground a lot. Uh, there's a lot more people on the ground that would probably want to do harm to a plane than right. pilots that want to crash it. Right, I, I agree with Jimmy. Yeah. Or they, or he also said to put in a key code too. What do you mean a key code? So it better happen again. One of the issues that could happen is that the uh, the pilot can go through on the outside, and there's a, a, a key code that he can let himself in. It doesn't need necessarily be locked from the inside. No, because the, the, the reason they don't do that is because this way they may be they may hijack planes that way by threatening the pilot's life, or threatening to cut off one of his fingers, or holding up an infant and threatening to cut its throat. They would get into the cockpit. If you hold up a small baby and you fucking you put a knife in his throat and threaten to cut his throat, it's hard for people to not do what you say. Right. So right, I don't think that they would. I don't know. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think they'd ever give that control the ability to get into the cockpit. Well, he basically said at this point you're going to see a knee-jerk reaction from the FAA, and probably something's going to be done that's going to probably make it a little bit easier for a plane to be hijacked. 
Not but necessarily. The one thing they're way. suggesting is that uh, two pilots uh, have to be in the cockpit at all times. Well, there's always two people have to be in the cockpit here. You're a flight attendant right. or somebody. So could, a, mean, could a, a suicidal pilot knock out the flight attendant exactly, when she comes sure. in? Yes. Punch yes. her in the face, knock her out. Hit and her with then, the fucking extinguisher. Yeah. yeah. You can hit the pilot with the extinguisher. Pick it up and smash the guy's head in. Right. And cave his head in real quick and then fucking take the plane over. It's like you're not going to prevent that. I just assume they're pals. Yeah, you hope they're friends. That they have to hang out all the time. You get pals See, to, you, to fly these planes. More. Sure. If you're paranoid, he also said that there was a therapy way that if you wanted to fuck up both the pilots, that there's not it's not um, air sealed the cabin. So if there was a way to sneak on some type of gas, you could just slide it underneath the cockpit. Both don't be passed out. So I mean, there's always going to be ways to do this. Yeah, right. but those guys have masks that they could put on pretty easy. The oxygen masks. I mean, right. Or, or do it. I think doesn't El Al have the fucking bathroom in the cockpit, like for the pilots? Like you, I think you can't access the cockpit from. Oh, really? The other part of the plane. Give them a Snapple bottle. <laughs> what if they get a shit though? Well, some of my logs would really need more than a Snapple bottle. Uh, be all hanging out like a fucking snake that opened with peanut brittle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a Gatorade bottle. <laughs> Would it fit? Sometimes. Not if it's an explosive one. I I'd literally be holding an empty bottle with fucking brown shit all down the sides of it. I would totally miss. <laughs> okay, I could easily full up, fill up a Gatorade bottle. Yeah. No problem. All right, fellas. Have a good morning, man. All right, Rich. It's been good so far, Rich, but thanks, Emil. All right. Uh, we got the audio. So, like no. Rich and Bonnie, they do a show every Tuesday night on this channel. They do very, very well. You got to check it out. Yeah, they do fairly well. They had their uh, daughter on, who's seven or eight years old, and she wasn't taking any shit from nobody last night. We got a couple highlights. I want to know what kind of clouds. C come on, we, uh, we don't have oh, the, we don't I have can, this I guest. Can't hang. I'm trying to hang up on. We her. don't have this guest too much longer. Okay, what are the clouds? Uh, there's a cirrus cloud, or like the blanket clouds. The stratus clouds are like the ones you see that are cotton balls. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right. I agree. I agree. Go fuck yourself. Stop it. Get her out. No, get her out of here. We're going to get gonna in trouble. Get, we're going to get you her taken away that. from us. <laughs> well, we'll I get you two Brian more. Brian from Pennsylvania. Raina. Yeah. Do you think you're, that your father is a celebrity? Mm, no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, and then this. Raina, you want him to curse? Sure, sure. Go ahead. What do you What do you got to say to Raina? Raina, you're a poopy face. That's the best. That's the best he's got. Rich whispers <laughs> into the mic. Okay, Rich is the worst. Why would he? Now I'm mad. Call him an asshole. Can you pull your dumb face off, Mike? Right, because now it just ruins the whole fucking thing. The fucking seven year old has better mic technique. Right. You Put make your hand sure. over it, something. Right. Yeah. Because then if, I, if out of nowhere she says you're an asshole, that's way funnier than hearing the father go, call him an asshole. Yeah, he's just not a bright man. Can we put replay? Of course. <laughs> now I'm mad. I'm trying to praise him today, and he fucked it up. Raina, you want him to curse? Sure, sure. Go ahead. What do you, you got to say to Raina? Raina, you're a poopy face. That's the best. That's the best he's got. <laughs> okay, then you asshole. <laughs> but we all heard you whisper. Call exactly. Him, call him an asshole. She yeah. just said, "Call him daddy." <laughs> right. And then uh, finally, Mike from I South stink. Carolina has a question for Raina. What <laughs> is it, Mike? Raina, I was wondering. You seem to be uh, very intelligent. Who do you think you got your smarts from, your mother or your father? Okay, I think I got the smartness from dad. And what? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, there's just like, if you go outside, all the cars like. <laughs> <laughs> Buildings are falling. <laughs> planes are coming out of the sky. <laughs> People are like falling over. <laughs> there you go. We had a little fun with their daughter last night. Maybe she did get the... If she's saying the exact same things when she's 20, right. then she did get it from her dad. Right. Like if this is as far as she's ever going to grow mentally, that's very possible she got it from Rich. She got it. She's dumb. She's got everything he, he had to offer already. Yeah. At seven or eight. Yep. She has all of his smarts that, right yeah, now. She's not, she now has to move on and get smart <laughs> yeah. by hanging around other people. Call up an asshole. Call, call up an asshole. He does that on our show. He probably covers his ears. When he, when he whispers, call her. Call him an asshole. 
All right, we're going to take a break. We got Ari Shafir coming in today. Nice. Yes. He's going to weigh in on the Trevor Noah thing. He's going to weigh in on maybe podcasting. He had a little controversy recently. Maybe he'll weigh in on that. Right? You yeah, the bullying thing? Did you hear about that one, too? Which bullying thing? With Ari? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just said that thing. That other thing. Uh, we got uh, Jim Florentine in studio today. Where are you going to be again, Jim? Um, Saturday, April 11th, Comedy Shop, Pumpkin Plains, New Jersey, with Don Jameson. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll be in Denver nice. this weekend. I'm done plugging it. If you want to come, come. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> why? Why? Why, you so, just, why you say it like that? Last just, minute rush. Let's, same, let's push yeah. this thing. Same fucking... I do the same plug every... Hey, come to Denver. Yeah, but... Tickets actually sell well. So I'll be... All right, uh, this is the time we got to push. Let's push. Get some yeah. sellouts for yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, Jim Norton in Denver. Man. I'm at the comedy... Uh, whatever it's called. Comedy Works downtown. And then you're going to start pushing Rochester uh, end of the month. It's, it's April... Wow, it's April Fool's today. April Falls. April Falls. Right. Right. I wonder if anyone's going to pull any tricks. Well, we're uh, monitoring some radio stations. See, the problem, uh, you know, uh, me and Anthony blew our load 18 years ago, and we were never able to really do another one after that. The whole mayor's prank. Oh, that was a great one. That fucking set the bar so fucking high for us and radio in general. We... Ha we never did another one, I don't think. We, we just... You don't have to after that one. Yeah. I uh, I did post a whole bunch of press clippings from uh, our April Fool's prank in Boston. It re I haven't read these things in a long time. There's a lot of nonsense in the, in these uh, news clippings. So uh, go to my Instagram, OP Radio. I'm going to post a whole bunch of other ones. They, they had political cartoons about it and everything. So uh, the, the mayor had a whole the press conference, right? Oh, he was oh. not happy. Not happy. And you guys got fired like three days later. I think because you made it one more day on the air, right? Yeah, they, so I remember hearing an apology, or you guys say, it was saying, "Hey, we did, we're just messing around." And I, I don't think we, uh, I don't know if we ever apologized. But you did make it like I don't one remember, more day. To be honest with you, I don't think we. I, I think they wanted us to apologize. Maybe it was God. I don't know. I got to ask Aaron. I don't know if we apologized. Uh, did they make us read something and we were sarcastic about it? I don't know. I don't no. remember. You remember? Well, there was that news story that came out where you talked about. Oh yeah. Well. Well. Oh god. Do we have to play this again? <laughs> no, I think, Can I, think I see the good. video? Hold yeah. On. Play it for Florence. I want to see the video. Uh, this is uh, absolutely the Opster. Yeah. You want to know who the Opster is? Here it is. So we did sort of apologize because they, uh, they, they they snuck out of nowhere. Like, we, like the radio station was in the Dead. middle of the fucking boonies, basically, in an office park. And we left our building to hit the elevator. And, and the, a news crew comes running out of, out of somewhere. I don't know where. I don't know where they could have possi possibly been hiding because no one knew they were there. And, uh, and then they got their uh, exclusive. Radio hoax. It's yes. Called. Florentine, what you should concentrate on here is this is before Opie really knew that he was getting fired, but he did know there were some TV cameras there to see the Opster. That's really? right. Oh, yeah. You got that right. You're saying he played it up? Oh, oh yeah. Boy. Swish of the hair. No, there's no hair swish. Well, the hair was a little long back then, but, you know, Florentine should shut up because he used to have long hair, too. I never swished it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not once. Well, wait, wait to see it. Maybe I didn't. I didn't even Maybe have it was to just in it. my eyes. I never swished my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here. I did apologize. Listen for the apology. It's wonderful. Why doesn't this work? Oh, that's this why. Button. Tonight, those DJs are apologizing to the mayor. But as News 4's David Robichaud tells us, Mr. Menino's not interested in apologies. One of my relatives was uh, just coming out of the hospital, and she was. Somebody called and asked her, um, "Could we do anything for your family during this tragedy?" Tragedy, and uh, you know, she was shocked. My daughter, my wife, and um, a lot of my personal friends called the officer, and my staff was some of the crying. Can anyone take a joke no. anymore? On April Fool's Day, W. Totally not getting that the whole fucking city hates us. What an idiot! What a fucking idiot! I like the years. That's me the next day after all the press and the and and uh, you know uh, and all the news on this thing. That's that's my response. Could anyone take a joke anymore? Although, well, you know what? After April Fool's, that's probably the right response. What are you supposed to say? I mean, you yeah. besides the fact you were just a rock and roll guy. Thank you, Jim. But, but I mean, thank you. Put it in perspective, please. What are you supposed to say? 
Well, you because you didn't think it was going to get to this point where there's going to be news conferences no, that, and all this other stuff. So the thought at the time was, I mean, certainly we wanted to take some big chances with our radio show because New York was a call in. We didn't have, we didn't officially have a uh, an offer. We had, we well, we kind of had an offer, but it wasn't official because you know that would be some some bad fucking pool basically so uh we were taking massive chances with our radio show knowing no i had no problem knowing with you we had something that. to fall back on but with that said we uh, the whole idea that day was to take the april fool's uh, ridiculousness that every radio station did like hey dollar bills are no longer accepted at convenience stores <laughs> why not <laughs> why the fuck not <laughs> You're still accepted, Chip. All right. Or they would pick some dumb hill in their uh, in their city or town and and say that it's going to erupt, that it, it was an old volcano. Ugh. They should have done something fun with that. Right. And said, so, you know, the city council has named Old Bunker Hill. They're calling it Cunt Hill now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. How have been going. Well, there you go. You should have been with us uh, back then because that, that was our thought. Like, all right, yeah, this, these radio fucking April Fool's pranks are so fucking stupid. Let's just let's just go for it. Let's just make it ridiculously over the top. So, Plus, you were demented anyway. So, Well, demented as hell. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, back to the clip. AAF DJs Opie and Anthony, who like to refer to themselves as demented, told their <laughs> listeners Mayor Menino had been killed in a car accident. At the 